All right, look, CP, here's my, my contention is that great bigs, unlike wings, like, you know, Kobe can win with Pau. Pau is not like an all-time MVT P type player. He's a great player. But uh, Kobe, Michael Jordan can win with Scottie Pippen. Great player, but not like multiple MVP award type player. But a great big, Kareem, needs another guy like him. Oscar or Magic. A great big, Shaq, needs Kobe or D-Wade in his prime. Because they, the, the whole offense, they don't, they don't, they're not you know, creating shots and the, the offense doesn't flow through them. They need someone else to get them the ball, right? So my point about Giannis is this. Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton ain't it. They're excellent. They're good players. But KD has Kyrie Irving. And when he's healthy, James Harden. It's different. I'm not saying Giannis is KD. But I'm saying you're not going to win a championship if Middleton and Holiday are the main support. Nevertheless, you can't go out like Giannis has been going out. How much pressure is on yeah, him yeah. tonight, CP? Tremendous pressure. This is, this is a legacy game. This is a statement game for the Greek freak. There's no doubt about it, Max. He has to step up tonight. I agree with you wholeheartedly in that, you know, Middleton and Drew Holiday may not be those guys. I don't think they're 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 borderline all-stars, you know, in particular Middleton. And, you know, they've got to step up and, and help him out. But the thing is, is that I don't like how the coach is using the Greek freak. He's not KD. He's not LeBron. He's not a guy that can go out and get his own shot. He can't create for others that well in isolation. And take a look at this stat. In the playoffs, he is is six of six as the pick and roll roll man 1.3 points per possession but he's also thir they run they ran nine plays in in uh and as, as the pick and roll roll man they ran 34 plays in the playoffs with him in isolation 12 out of 28 from field goal range 0.88 points per possession they've got to be able to utilize him more in the pick and roll just hunt out those mismatches versus the nets see where he can get going as the role man and utilize him as a secondary you think drew holiday's the guy to do that max they've got to try something him just chucking up shots you know his shot selection has been terrible they they got too spoiled in that last uh game in the regular season against the nets where he he scored about 30 40 points and he was great on the perimeter as a shooter the nets will live with that in the playoffs that may not work for you and they have have no secondary option right now they've got to be able to get him going in the pick and roll this is what i mean by a guy on your level like this is why then really it's the bucks those three hedge fund guys who bought the team in milwaukee and then played milwaukee yeah. cheap they didn't want to pay luxury tax they yeah. let brogdon walk yep. out and brogdon's significance yep. is not as his value to the team necessarily it's that you can match salaries in a in a trade when guys become yeah. available but because they didn't have brogdon yeah. They wound up with Drew Holiday yeah. instead of Chris yeah. Paul. If you put Chris Paul with Giannis, and now you're running pick and rolls with Chris Paul and Giannis, by the way, you still don't have, still enough. Don't have enough. You still need another guy, still maybe at enough. least Middleton, yeah. right? But at least now yeah. you're giving yourself a realistic fighting chance. Since I'm talking Chris Paul, CP, the franchise here on the Max Kellerman Show, ESPN Radio, CP, from Knicks fans TV here on the Goodyear Hotline. Since I'm talking about Chris Paul, James Harden's going to have a ring when this postseason's over, which will leave Chris Paul without one. Is he, will he be, at that point, the best player in the history of basketball, at least in the modern era, without a ring? Yeah, I think you're going to have to put him right up there with the mailman, Carl Malone, Barkley, and my guy Patrick Ewan. Yeah, I'm going to slip the, the number 33 in there. Listen, Chris Paul has been absolutely dynamic in these playoffs. Uh, this series, he's back. You know, back from the shoulder injury. 38 dimes on two turnovers. Three playoff games in his history. He's had 15 straight assists without a turnover. He's been absolutely a maestro uh, for the Suns out there, getting his guys involved. They've been hunting Michael Porter Jr. down in the pick and roll, absolutely taking him to school. You know, Nuggets have been trying to keep Chris Paul isolated on the pick and roll to the sidelines he snake dribbles back into the middle of the of the court into the paint and then he's a triple threat from there they have absolutely no answer for him when he's getting out in transition and getting the suns going as you said he's got eight and activated and and we haven't even spoken about devin booker's brilliance and chris paul's impact on him so uh certainly my mvp candidate this year and and he's got the suns rolling 
Yeah, I don't know if I want to give Chris Paul credit for Booker because Booker was killing the game in yeah. the bubble last year without Chris yeah. Paul yeah. there. You know, like, but but certainly Aiton. Like, I, I just love the fact that the Suns on paper looked like, ooh, that's really good. That's real. Oh, this is going to work out great. The, and even DeAndre Aiton should be aided by Chris Paul's yeah. presence. And and it doesn't always yeah. work like this in sports, but sometimes just as you'd imagine it worked out. And so far, that's these Suns. They have to be considered live to get the whole thing done, at least in the Western Conference. Yeah. All right, CP, before I let you go, yeah. can we expect anything from Paul George? Oof. I mean, like, if Paul George Oof. can just stay his normal self, the Clippers can come out of the West, but, like, he hasn't been able to do it. Signs of life. He went off in the fourth yeah. quarter. Can we expect – what should we expect from PG-13 tonight? You have to expect – you have to hope – for an aggressive effort from Paul George from start to finish. He had a good fourth quarter in game one, but he went into that fourth quarter with only th three shot attempts from three. That's not going to get it done. Tyron Lue said in his post-game press conference, he says when Rudy Gobert goes into that drop coverage, meaning when he lays back on the pick and roll to protect the paint, that is open opportunity for the Clippers to take good mid-range shots. Paul George was uh, missed eight of nine field goal attempts from the mid-range. That's not going to get it done. Another thing that concerns me, Max, is that in the first game, you had a nice, efficient game from Luke Kennard. He had a great game. I liked what he gave him. He had an efficient game from Reggie Jackson as well. You can't expect those guys to do that again on the road. This is where your superstars step up. This is where your big money guys step up. I think the claw will get back to it, but Paul George has got to help this team or else they're going to be down 2-0 after game two. You'll be surprised to hear maybe that when you want to put Patrick Ewing in there, I nice. agree. Patrick Ewing gets slept on. Right, he was nice. a tremendous game changer, both ends of the right. floor. He could be a primary scoring option on a championship caliber team. They went, they went to the finals and almost won with Patrick Ewing running the offense through Patrick Ewing with very little help. Very and he was a great defender. He was the very anchor of a defense, a rim protector, great defender, and a hard worker. I would say the greatest player without a championship in the modern era, not guys I didn't see, not Elgin Baylor or someone like that, but that I've seen are uh, James Harden won. I think that's going to be over with yeah. this year. And I think the candidates yeah. for greatest player after this year without a ring are going to be Patrick Ewing, Chris Paul, Charles Barkley, Come Carl on. Malone, Allen Iverson. Yeah, I think man. those five guys, yeah. and maybe yeah. one or two, I think those five guys would top my list. CP, the franchise, Knicks fan TV, ladies and gentlemen. CP, as usual, a, a complete technological <laughs> debacle. Um, the, 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 those are those guys from Connecticut School of Broadcasting, Max. I'm telling you. I said those are those guys from Connecticut School of Broadcasting, Max. I'm telling you, man. It's something going on in that back room. I think it's because Rod, you gave Raj a day off. I think that's what happened. It's a domino effect, man. Interesting. He sabotaged you and then took, took the day, day off. off. <laughs> CP, ladies and gentlemen. Off. Thanks Thank a lot. you, CP. We'll talk All to right. you next week. Coming up, Jordan Love is ready to start week one for the Packers.